Sheikh Walid Basiri, insha'Allah. I'll give you a brief introduction of Sheikh Walid Basiri. He's a graduate with a bachelor's degree in Islamic sciences from Al Iman Muhammad University in Saudi Arabia. He then completed his master's in Islamic theology, world religions, and modern religious sects. He is currently working on his PhD coursework in theology, or Aqidah. Sheikh Walid is involved in various organizations and projects. He is an instructor at the American Open University in Alexandria, Virginia, United States of America, and serves as the Imam of the Clear Lake Islamic Center in Houston, Texas. He is a frequent guest speaker at universities, conventions, radio talk shows, television, interfaith meetings, and community centers nationally and internationally. He is also a member of the North American Imams Federation, NAIF, Assembly of the Muslim Jurists in America, AMJA, and the research from the Fatwa and Research Committees. He is director of Texas Dawa Convention and advisor to numerous Islamic societies and organizations around the United States. Sheikh Walid has ijazas in reciting the Holy Quran and in several books of hadith awarded by various scholars. He has had the opportunity of studying under some of the most notable scholars of our time, namely Sheikh Ben Baz and Sheikh Abdur Razak Al Afifi. Sheikh Ibn Jabrin, Sheikh Al Barak, and many others. He has been involved in Dawah for the last 15 years in Saudi Arabia, the United States, and Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I welcome to the microphone Sheikh Walid Basiuni to talk on the subject The Journey of the Believers. The Journey of the Believers, Sheikh Walid Basiuni. If anyone lost this wallet also, we found it, inshallah come to the left of the stage to collect it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi al-haqq al-mubeen. Alhamdulillahi al-ladhi shara'a li'ibadihi anwa'a al-ibadat. ويسر لهم سبل القربات وضاعف الحسنات وتجاوز عن السيئات ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise to you to Allah and his praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his family, his companions and his followers until the Day of Judgment, and all the prophets and the messengers and their followers. My dear brothers and sisters, the journey of the believers. As I can see that I'm facing the believers, males and the female and females, that we all believe in Allah as our Lord, and believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his messenger. For those who believe in Allah to be the only one worthy of worship, for those who believe that Allah is the creator and the sustainer for the heavens and earth, that's why he should be only worshipped, he should be only worshipped and obeyed to the one who believed that Muhammad the son of Abdullah, the one who was born in Mecca and died in Medina, was the true it was a true prophet and a messenger of Allah, was sent to all humanity with peace as a mercy to mankind. We have sent you, O Muhammad, as a mercy for mankind. For those who living today a life which has became a very materialistic life, where people are so busy to take few hours of their days for dedicating these few hours to Allah, for, my, for them to contemplate on themselves and the world around them, so they can come closer to Allah 
closer to their creators. For those who complain that their heart is solid and they complain that their heart is not soft as it should be. For those who read and hear the stories about the early Muslim generations, how pure they used to be and how soft heart they had. And they see themselves that they are very far away from that. For those that their act of worship turned to be just habits, that they do it daily, but they're not enjoying it. For those they, don't, they did not yet, or they complain that they don't taste the sweetness of the Iman. For those who complain that when they pray, they cannot have khushur, concentrating in their prayer. For those who know that they're getting weaker every day in front of the temptation of this life, and the pressure around them from every corner calling them not to stay in the right path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those who are struggling with themselves, for all of us, regardless our level of iman, of faith, high or low, regardless how much good deeds you do daily, because among us the one who do so much and among us who do not as much as he or she sh supposed to do. To all of us, in these few minutes, I would like to show you, so you can see with your own eyes, the future of the believers. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah, the Almighty in His book, Al-Quran, have told us about the believers and the future of the believers. He told us that whomever will do a righteous deed, whether a male or a female, while he or she is a true believer, verily to him we will give a good life and we shall pay them certainly a reward to the best of what they used to do in this worldly life. He said the Almighty, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَلَنَحْيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ It's a promise from Allah for the believers, for the good doers, two things. A good life in this worldly life and a great reward in the next one, after death. Because as you know, that God and Allah, the Almighty Subhanahu, did not just create us to live in this earth, to eat and drink and then die and that's it. There is a day where Allah will resurrect all His creation and gather them in a great gathering to judge between them, to show His justice, to show the truth to all humanity, to appear to His creation once again, as He did before He created our bodies to our souls, as He said the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He have taken covenant from the children of Adam, when he created the souls of all humanity, that Allah is the only one worthy of worship, and everyone admitted. Then he warned them. He said, when a day will come, and I will gather you again, but in that gathering will be different. It will be the body and the souls together, which is in the day of resurrection. Don't say, I forgot about this promise. Don't say that I don't remember that I promised that I will, I will worship you alone, O oh Allah. My brothers and sisters, you will see with your own eyes how the believer enjoy the reward of his good deeds in this life before the hereafter. The believer in this life 
his life is totally different than the one who don't believe, who disbelieve in Allah, who don't have that connection between him and his Lord. Because the believer, the most joyful thing to his heart is knowing his Lord. This soul were created by Allah. The moment you go back to him, you found rest and peace. Have you seen somebody was born in this life and he doesn't or she doesn't know his or her parents? They've been told that you have a father and you have a mother and they're living in another place, in another village, in another city. Let's say they're living in Hyderabad and you are in Chennai. Don't you think that this person will do everything possible in his or her hand to go look for his parents, search for his parents, to meet them, and he will never find rest until he knows or she knows who is her or his father is. Who is your mother and who is really your mother? So you can meet them because they have brought you to this life. The soul that Allah created in your body knows that it's been created by the Almighty Allah. That's why the person who's away from Allah's back will always be in confusion, will never find rest until he or she find the creator of the soul. Exactly like that son and daughter will never find rest until they find their parents. And you can tell the big difference between the Creator and the parents. And the great need that the soul has for knowing the Creator and for knowing its Lord. My brothers and sisters, the mu'min in this life, his real joy, his security, his safety, his rest, whenever he feels that he come closer to Allah. It is so amazing that in this life, when you fear something, you run away from it. But when you fear Allah, you run to Him. And this is the only way to feel safe and secure. The mu'min will not be terrified by the thing that usually terrify people in this life. For example, the believer knows if something happened to him today and he lost his job, or something happened to him and a disease or something bad strike him, he knows that he is in the hand of the most merciful. He knows that the most merciful is the one who looking after him. He knows that Allah seeing and watching and witnessing everything that he is doing. So he feels secure. There is no fear in his heart. He knows that this is not the end of the world. This is not everything in the world. He knows there is something more valuable, something that he can rely on it. And, and that thing, it is so strong, so powerful, which is the Almighty Allah. That's why the believers never miss anything from the joy, the materialistic joys of this dunya, if it didn't happen to them. Once the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sitting with his companions and Mus'ab ibn Umayr walked into the gathering. Ali ibn Abi Talib, the cousin of the Prophet وسلم, said, Mus'ab walked into the gathering while he's wearing clothes, which is not made from the best material. It's a very cheap material because he was poor at that time. When the Prophet ﷺ saw him, أَبَّدَهُ بصره. He started looking at him, up and down, checking him basically. Then the Nabi ﷺ couldn't control his tears. Then he said, I have seen this young boy in Mecca, and nobody among the people of Mecca lived a life like his life. He lived a very luxurious life was very, came from a very rich family. He used to get his shoes from one country and his garments, the thing that he wear, 
from another country. He used to wear a perfume that people will smell from a far distance. And whenever he passed in the street, people said Mus'ab was here because we still can we can still smell the fragrance that he wear. But after he became Muslim, his family refused to give him money, give him support, give him his rights. He lost all of that. But don't you think for a moment Mus'ab regret that decision that he made when he accepted Islam? When he became one of the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa How many young men was there in the time of the Prophet with the people of Quraysh? Rich, powerful. How many of them we remember today? How many of them the history have saved their name and their legacy? The history only narrated to us the legacy of Mus'ab ibn Umayr and people like him. He didn't lose really. You think Mus'ab now in his grave regretted that decision that he made when he decided to join the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, my brothers and sisters. The believers in this dunya, as some of the scholars said, have Jannah, paradise, had a time that they enjoy themselves so much when they feel that they are so close to Allah. When you raise your hand and you feel, when you raise your hand and you feel that there is no distance between you and Allah, that Allah listening to you, seeing you, and you feel that you knowing Him, that you can call him, you know his names, you know his attributes, you know what he loves. When that knowledge settles in the heart, when that feeling comes and take over the human's feelings and motions, he feels the joy and he will feel that he's so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why one of the scholars said in this life there is a paradise. If you don't walk it, you will not walk into the next one. And one of them said, Wallahi, the kings and the rich people, if they know the amount of happiness that we have as a believers, they will fight us over it. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, one of the great Muslim scholars, once said in a beautiful way, he said, what my enemy can do to me? My joy in my in my heart. He said, if they kill me, I will be a murderer, I will be a shaheed. And if they put me in jail, it will be a chance for me, for me to contemplate and to be by myself, reading Quran, reviewing my memorization, praying and enjoying myself. And if they ask me to move to another country, it will be a good chance for me to visit a new community and a new land. They cannot do anything to me. That's the believer. Knows that there is nothing control his life but Allah. He's not a slave to the money. Because the moment you are a slave to the money, you are a slave to the one who owns the money. You're not slave to anything else but Allah. Ibn al-Qayyim said, هَرَبُوا مِنَ الرِّقِّ الَّذِي خُلِقُوا لَهُ فَبُلُوا بِرِقِّ النَّفْسِ وَالشَّيْطَانِ People in this life try to run away from being a slave to Allah. That they end up slave to their own souls, their own desires, or slave to the shaytan or other humans. The believers know that he only submit himself completely to the Almighty God, his Creator. The believers live this life like this until a moment will come and I know all of us here don't deny no one of us deny that there is a moment will come and you will leave this world there is a moment will come and you shall taste death ستفضي بك الأيام في بعض مرها إلى ساعة لا ساعة لك بعدها these days carrying you to a moment, to a day, that you will not have extra second to be added to your life. 
Whenever the time comes for you to die, you're going to die. There is nobody can say, you know what, I'm safe from that. I will not die. I will never die. Nothing going to happen to me. Nobody can claim that. That's why Al Hassan al Basri said that one thing everybody knew it for sure and very certain about. Nobody doubted, which is death. But we treat death as if it's the most doubtful things. That experience, when you for the first time will be able to see with your own eyes the angels who are coming to take your soul out of your body. For the first time in your life, you will see with your own eyes your soul leaving your body. For the first time, you will see death. The thing that you heard about, the thing that you have seen in others, you will see it happening to you, not to anybody else. It is a hard moment. You know, when you live in a house for a long time, and about time to move to a new house, or you have a car that it's been with you for a long time, or you have a friend that you've been with him since childhood, and a time come for you to move to another place, it is very hard to move out because you're so attached to this place, so attached to this car, so attached to this friend. What about this soul, which has been attached to your body for the last, for the last 60 years, for the last 40 years, for the last 20 years, that you're so attached to your body, so used to it, Exactly as if some one thing. It's about time for them to separate it from each other. That's why it's a very hard. That's why death is very hard. Because you're taking this soul out of the body. And the soul doesn't want to leave the body. Holding to the body. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what is the future. You know that this is something strange. I never seen these creations before. The angels taking my soul away from my body. In that moment, my brothers and sisters, every one of us, every one of us knows that he is going through that experience one day of hers or her life. As for the believers, for the good doers, their experience is totally different than others. Allah, the Almighty told us how this experience will be for the believers. Listen to what Allah said. تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياء في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة. Those who say Allah is our Lord and stood fasting on that, these they are holding tight to their belief, to their religion, holding tight to the robe of Allah. The angels will be descending on them when they, when they are dying. Angels coming and surrounding them, telling them two things. Don't be sad and don't be afraid. Don't have fear in your heart. And don't have sadness. Why? Because they telling him, don't be sad for leaving this life behind. Don't be sad for leaving your family and your wealth and everything you had behind your back. Don't be sad. And don't have fear. Don't be afraid from the future. There is a great things coming. 
to you. Don't be afraid. Don't be sad. We used to be your supporter, your awliya in this life, and we will be in the next. So there is no need for you to be afraid. There is no place for fear anymore. You should feel secure. That's the glad tidings that the angel will be giving to you when you're leaving this life. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet ﷺ said that the believers, when his soul leave his body, it will be like the same way you see the water coming out from the bottle. Very smooth. The drop of the water coming out of the bottle. The believer see these angels has shining face. A garment to shred the soul in it. And this garment from paradise it smells so good. The angels look so good with the very shiny, beautiful, welcoming faces. Taking the soul carefully with respect. Because this soul deserves to be respected, deserves to be honored. Because this is the soul of the good doers, the soul of the righteous brother and the righteous sister. It is the soul of the person who used to pray, who used to donate, who used to help. It is the soul for the sister who used to be modest and used to be helpful, to used to be to used to watch her tongue. It is the soul for the good mother and the good father and the good son. It is the soul for the believers and the good doers. Angels flying with the souls to the heavens, representing the soul to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, carrying it. And every gate in the heavens will be open. Every angel in the heavens will say, we would love for this soul to pass by us. It smells so good. And they will name it with the best name that that person had in dunya. Then after that, the soul will be returned back to the body, when the body will be replaced in the grave. That dark hole that people dig on the ground. Have you seen the grave recently? Have you seen that place which is your future? You know, we build buildings. We're building stores and we know we're going to move to this store. We're going to move to this building. We're going to move to this house. Have you seen the house that you were going to move to also one day? When they put you alone there. And the only company you will have from this life is the sand, the dust, the garment that you cut, the kafan that you have on you when they put you in your grave. And what? And your good deeds. The Prophet ﷺ told us that the believer, the good doers, his good deeds will come in the shape of a person. And that person looks so good, smells so good. And the, per the Muslim will say, who are you? Then that person will reply by saying, I'm your good deeds. Your good deeds came in the form of a person just to give you a company, to give you the glad tiding, that good doers, when he will be asked in his or her grave, who is your Lord? Who's the one you used to worship? Who is your prophet? What is your religion? He would say, my Lord is Allah. My messenger is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And my religion is an Islam. Because he practiced this religion. Because he worshipped this God. Because he followed the sunnah of this prophet in this life. Incapable of saying it to the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also told us that the good doers, the believers, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ 
Allah guide whomever He wants to the right answers in this life which is in the grave and the next when He will she be resurrected. My brothers and sisters, when a person will be in his grave, the person will be giving the glad tidings that he's among the believers. And his grave will turn to be a place of joy. That he, in that time, his soul will enjoy that period of time which is between his death or her death until the day of resurrection. But when the day of judgment comes and the trumpet will be blown and Allah will resurrect and raise all the dead from the earth and everybody gather. Have you been to Bombay recently? When it's so crowded, so much traffic. Have you been to one of these traffic jam in Chennai where you stay for 20, 30 minutes in your car? You can't go left or right just waiting. And some of them stay for an hour as if you are exactly in a parking lot. You don't move. How frustrated you were. It's hot. It's not moving. Everybody there. You get bored. You just want to get out of the car. Guess what, my brothers and sisters? You will not be in a stuck in a traffic of Bombay or a traffic in one of the crowded cities in the world like New York. No. You will be stuck in a traffic with all humanity gathered from Adam all the way to the end. You will be standing with everybody where Allah not only resurrect humans, humans and jinn and animals. Everything were created among these creations will be there. And guess what? Angels surrounding all of them. Standing, you can't, you're not in your car, you're having your AC on. No, no, you're standing in a land of resurrection with every one of all these creations that I just mentioned. Waiting for Allah to judge between His creation. Waiting for 50,000 years. Not five hours, not five minutes, it's a 50,000 years. Can you imagine that? Can you see yourself there, standing with all these creation? And guess what? This is the day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes so many times in the Quran. لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة أيحسب الإنسان أن لن نجمع عظامة بلا قادرين على أن نسوي بنانة بل يريد الإنسان ليفجر أمامه يسأل أيان يوم القيامة فإذا برق البصر وخسف القمر وجمع الشمس والقمر يقول الإنسان يومئذ أين المفر كلا لا وزر إلى ربك يومئذ المستقر 
ينبأ الإنسان يومئذ بما قدم وأخر And that day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the whole entire earth the day of standing where people are standing that the sun and the moon will be gathered together there is no day and light counting the days it will not be like the same way we do today it's totally another world where the human will be told about everything that you have done in the past everything you have done in secret or in public alone or in gathering when you see it written when you see it being given to you in your book in your record and you know exactly what you have done and you will be judged for your actions in that day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارًا وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارًا وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ When the mother, the breastfeeding mother, will leave her infant and leave the infant away and run. Just she's so scared. She just want to protect herself that she is even willing to give up her infant that she's breastfeeding. And when the pregnant mother will lose her load out of fear, everybody running. You see people who think that they're drunk, but they're not that the fear took, took over their hearts and took over their minds. When the trumpet will be blown and everyone will be terrified except those who Allah want them to stay safe and secure. And those are the believers, the good doers. That day, their situation totally different, different than others. You know why my brothers and sisters? Because the believers Allah said about them in this dunya, when they feed people, when they feed people, وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا They give food to all kinds of people. Orphans, poor, asira. And Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah said, non-Muslims. They give food to everyone who needs food. Why are they giving food to them? We're giving you this food for the sake of Allah. Seeking the pleasure of Allah. We don't want to expect from you any reward in this dunya. Even thank you, we're not waiting for it. We just want to give you the food. Give you the food that you need. Give you the help that you ask for. Then, We're giving you this food because we fear the day of judgment where Allah's wrath and anger will be so severe. Allah is so merciful that He made a promise 
that he will never let you fear the day of judgment twice. If you fear that day today, if you have fear in your heart today, from the day of judgment, in the day of judgment you will be safe. And if you're careless, you never thought about it, you don't care, you will fear that day tomorrow. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مِنْ عَذَابِ رَبِّهِمْ مُشْفِقُونَ إِنَّ عَذَابَ رَبِّهِمْ غَيْءٌ أَمُونَ One of the description of the believers that they fear the day of judgment. In that day, my brothers and sisters, the angels will be coming to the believers, telling them, لَا يَحْزُنُهُمُ الْفَزَعُ الْأَكْبَرُ وَتَتَلَقَّاهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ هذا يومكم الذي كنتم توعدون. Angels coming to them, telling them, This is the day you've been promised from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The believer in that day will be giving his book with his right hand, going to everybody, telling them, Look to my record, I have done good in this dunya. I used to do a lot of good deeds. This is my record. Happy, proud of his deeds. And when he get the book with his right hand, when he see that he passed the bridge, going towards paradise, and the angels everywhere around him, angels will call upon them. Allahu Akbar. Ya laddat al-asma'i in hiya sami'at. Allahu Akbar. The angels calling upon them, telling them, over there the paradise that you've been promised as a reward for the good deeds that you used to do in this life. This is your reward. Approaching the paradise, and at the gate of the paradise, the angels saying, Salamun alaykum, tibitum fadukhuluha khalideen. Telling you, Salamu alaykum. Enter to live forever in this paradise. My brothers and sisters, Paradise, the thing that words are not enough to describe. Paradise, where everything you wish, it comes true. Where everything you dream of, you can have. The paradise and the people of paradise. As Allah said, تَعَرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ نَضْرَةَ النَّعِيمِ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ فِي شُغُلٍ فَاكِهُونَ The people of paradise يُسْقَوْنَ مِنْ رَحِيقٍ مَخْتُومٍ The people of paradise وَعِنْدَهُمْ قَاصِرَاتُ الطَّرْفِ أَتْرَابٍ in paradise rivers, in paradise homes made of gold and silver, in paradise creation been created just to serve you, to give you pleasure, to make you feel good about yourself. In paradise, any fruits that you wish, any food that you dream of, any joy that you're seeking, rest. Nobody gets sick. Nobody will do anything evil or think of anything evil. It's purity. And it's forever. And what tab all of that, my brothers and sisters, that when you enter paradise, Allah the Almighty Subhanahu will call upon all of the believers to come to meet Him. Allahu Akbar. The moment have come to meet that Lord that you worship. The moment comes to meet the Lord you, that you have been 
offering him all these good deeds in life. And Allah will call upon all the believers to meet them in paradise, in personal. Faces, shining faces, being given the pleasure to look at Allah, to meet Allah. And Allah will talk to everyone impersonal. And this is the top pleasure, the best thing that anything, or top everything in paradise, to be able to see Allah, to be able to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once Prophet Musa asked Allah, he said, Oh Allah, I want to ask you about what kind of reward that the person will get if he is in the lower, the lowest level of paradise. You know, paradise levels, 100th level. Musa said, what about the lowest level? Which, what he's going to get or what she's going to get? Do you know what the answer was? Allah said, this will be the last person to walk into paradise. That person actually, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take him out of the hellfire, he will not enter paradise. So he say, oh Allah, just let me be at the gate of paradise. I'm not going to ask you anything more. Then Allah will let him be at the gate of paradise. That person, Allah will allow him to be at the gate of paradise. He said, you're not going to ask me anything? He said, that's it. I will not ask anything more. That Allah will put him at the gate of paradise. The man will start looking inside paradise, seeing all this. And he would say, oh Allah, just let me go inside the paradise. Just inside it. Then he said, you promised me you're not going to ask anything. He said, just that. Then Allah will allow him to enter paradise. Then he will tell him, wish, this is the last person to enter paradise. Then Allah said to him, wish, what you want? He said, I want this and this and that, and I want all this. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that's it? And hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and others. He said, yes. Then he said, no, this and this and this, he remembers something. I want this and that. Then he said, all what you ask for will be given. That's it? Then he said, yes, that's it. فَيُذَكِّرُهُ اللَّهُ بِبَعْضِ مَا كَانَ يَشْتَهِي Allah will remind him of things that he used to like in, in dunya, in this life. Allah will tell him, what about this and that? He said, yes, this and that too. I want to have it. Until he finished, then Allah will tell him, I will give you all what you ask for, and way more than what you ask for. I will give you equal to the, mo to the richest person ever or the greatest king ever lived on this earth. Then the man said, all what they ask, plus whatever the greatest king or the richest person in the face of the earth used to have, subhanAllah, humans are humans. He would say, oh Allah, you mocking me? And you are the Lord? Then Allah said, and I will double it. And I will double it, 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 ten times. Allahu Akbar. This is the lowest level in paradise. Immediately what came to my mind when I was reading the question, the same thought that came to Musa's mind. And I think some of you have the same question that Musa had in his mind in that moment. Which is, if this is the lowest, what about the highest? Isn't that the question will come to your mind? Allah told Musa, those who are in the highest level in paradise, the words are not enough to describe what they're going to have. In it, things never been seen. In it, things never been heard of. In it, things never been created before. So that's why there is no words can describe it. I only can describe to you something you have seen or heard of. 
But I cannot describe to you something it's never been seen before, something never been heard of before. It's beyond your imagination. It is the Jannah that I have created with my own hand and prepare it for the most special people that I ever created. And this is the tub of paradise. Brothers and sisters, this is the Jannah that we all aiming and working hard to achieve. Once the Prophet ﷺ told the companions that in Jannah eight gates, and there is some, everybody will be called from one gate. If you are among the people who fast a lot, there is one gate for you. Good to your parents, there is one gate for you. So Abu Bakr said, Ya Rasulullah, can anybody be called from the eight gates? The Prophet ﷺ said, yes, and you are the one. I have a question for you. From how many gates Abu Bakr will enter paradise? How many gates you think? Only one. No, only one. He cannot enter paradise from the eight gates. Yani, there is one leg from one uh, gate and one hand from another gate and a head from one gate. And No, it's only one. He's not going to be cut eight pieces and enter and then all of them come together after he enter. No, no. He's not going to enter from one door and get out and go to the other door. No, it's this is the rule. If you walk into the paradise, you don't get out. He's going to enter from one. So why he asked the Prophet this question? Because he wants to have the choice. He looking to the best. He want to be the best. You know us today, if you ask any one of us, said, just throw me from the window, I don't mind. <laughs> Not from eight gates, I don't mind, too from any place. Just throw me in. Because we look into the lowest level. Abu Bakr want to be getting the pleasure, the choice, that's what made the difference. Those people make difference. He want to be called from the eight gates. You know, my brothers and sisters, what really it takes to move us, that to be really sincere from the bottom of our heart, we turn ourselves to our Lord. It's not hard to be among those that you have heard tonight their future. But all what it takes to be really sincere about it. I have a good friend of mine was shooting an episode in Mecca in the last 10 days of Ramadan. And one of the cameramen, like this gentleman here, he was a very heavy smoker. Which it doesn't mean by any means that they are heavy smoker. But that cameraman was a heavy smoker. He said, my friend, every 20, 15 minutes, he said, excuse me, I go outside to smoke a cigarette and come back. So that sheikh, he told him, why you don't quit smoking? Like any smoker I have seen in my whole entire life. The first thing he told you what? Sheikh, pray for me. Then the sheikh said, come. He said, I faced the Kaaba, I'm in the... 10th floor or 11th floor and I see the Kaaba and I said I raised my hand and he's next to me in the last 10 days of Ramadan in the night in the last third night in the last third of the night and I raised my hand and I start saying praising Allah mentioning his names mentioning his attributes and I spend maybe two three minutes saying Allah al-Rahman al-Rahim al-Aziz Ya Adha al-Jalali wal-Ikram Ya Khaliq al-Samawat wa Allah Praising Allah, mentioning all his names and his beautiful names and attributes to the extent my heart really start shaking and this man his heart start shaking just by mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes and I start praying and asking Allah for him everything you can think of good to his health, his wealth, his family, you name it in dunya, in the akhirah, everything. And the man crying, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Cry. 
Then in the end I said, Oh Allah, don't give him anything from this if he doesn't quit smoking. The man was saying, Ameen, Ameen. When he heard that, he said, Huh? He stopped. Do you know why he didn't say Ameen? Because he was not ready to quit smoking. Because when he said, pray for me, it didn't really come from the bottom of his heart. It's just a word. You know what? I'm mu'min. I'm Muslim. I do good deeds. But it didn't come really from the bottom of your heart. When this heart turns towards Allah, when this soul will be totally committed to their Lord, to its Lord, Lord, when you submit yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the moment you will see the meaning of being a believer, the meaning of being a righteous person, he or she. My brothers and sisters, for any good deeds to be accepted, you must be a believer who believes in Allah as the only one worthy of worship and you worship Him alone. Two, that you do this act of worship for the sake of Allah, to please Him. Three, that you do it according to the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Not according to your desire, not according to your tariqah, not according to your culture, not according to this or that. It is according to the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. With this, my brothers and sisters, I ask the Almighty Allah to make all of us among the good doers, the righteous people, that they will enjoy this life and they will meet Him while the Almighty please with us. May Allah bless you all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to the straight path and His praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu his family and his companions, and all of you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, insha'Allah. That was an excellent lecture, insha'Allah. And one of the most beautiful parts of it was your Quran recitation, insha'Allah. Jazakallah khair, that was beautiful Quran. Inshallah, we're going to the question and answer session now. This will be a brief question and answer. We have some of our volunteers and some of our non-volunteers who have responsibilities to their families, so we need to get them home on time. Most of you here have know the rules, inshallah. We have three microphones, one in the sister section, one in the rear brother section, one in the front men section. We're taking preference for non-Muslims, and we're asking non-Muslims to come forward with any comments, questions, or criticisms. We'd ask you all to line up in a queue. Don't bunch up around the mic. We ask you to be brief. We ask you to stick to the topic. We ask you to wait until called upon to ask your question. Don't just get to the mic and start. Um, at this point, inshallah, second written questions will still have second priority. So if you can get someone to ask it, it's better. Without further delay, in order to make things run smoothly and quickly in an orderly manner, I ask Sheikh Basuni to retake the podium. And I now open the floor to questions. We'll begin in the front for the men, and then go to the rear to the men, and then to the sister section. Unless, inshallah, something comes important in order to switch that order. Brother, could you please state your name, your occupation, and then your question. Also, one thing. I've noticed that some brothers, inshallah, they have a good zeal for asking questions and they're very regular in asking questions. But if you're asking questions a lot, inshallah, try and give someone else an opportunity also, inshallah. So go ahead, brother, and state your name, your occupation, and your question. Alhamdulillah. My name is Kashif. Um, yeah, I'm a businessman. Uh, my question, uh, Alhamdulillah, I have heard a similar lecture before. Al-Akhirah by Imam Anwar al-Awlaqi 
where he stated the series from death, uh, science before death, and after after and etc. Uh, I was confused with uh, one of the points, like okay. yeah, I think it's exactly when the soul is being taken for the good soul, the angels come down and they give them the bishara. Oh, you good soul, you come out. The coffins are brought from them to heaven, and the angels in the white, and for the evil soul, it is the opposite. That they are from the harsh material, etc. So my question is: Is this uh, indication for the believer or for the disbeliever is not sufficient enough as a good news guaranteeing them paradise? Because there are other hadith when I the series which, which when I look into, like uh, giving the books, the, the record of the deed in the right hand for the good doers and the left for the evil doers which comes in the later process or the crossing of the bridge uh, which is uh, depending on their amal nama they travel uh, and if there is hypocrite who's Not been much. in munafiq in Islam they drop down in hell that's what I think I heard so, so the question so then my question was with the way that your soul comes out is yeah. that a sufficient is proof? Is that not the sufficient proof for a guaranteed paradise all? Because when the series come, I still have a doubt, is this person guaranteed or not? Because Allah also said one verse in the Quran, al Khariya, that uh, al Jaheen, that Allah will show hell even to the believers. Alhamdulillah. Good. Uh, good. Uh, the question, just let me sum up the question. Uh, if a person from the beginning will know his distance, why he will be terrified or be scared in the next stage in the land of resurrections or when his deeds will be weighted, when he goes over the bridge, if he knows that he's going to paradise. First of all, the scholars have raised this issue. Uh, the word of the unseen is different than the word of the seen. Here in this life, when you get an information, you keep it in your mind and you know it all the time. But it does not necessarily to mean it will be the same thing when you resurrect in the Day of Judgment. It doesn't, there is nothing, the hadith and the verse in the Quran does not suggest or say in any way that the person when he will resurrect, he will remember what he has seen in his grave. So maybe he forgot, he know, he did, he's not aware of what happened in his grave. And that's happened in every stage, as you heard, it's a 50,000 years where people really can not be aware of that particular stage when he's been giving a certain bishara or a glad tiding, but it does not necessarily mean it will continue with him after that. That's one. Two, still even when you know, when somebody gives you good news, but because the situation is so hard, it still shakes your heart. So you need reassurance. You need to be reassured about this. Like for example, if I tell you that uh, it is going to be fine, inshallah, the weather is going to be a little bit cold. But it became so cold in a sense, it raised even doubt in your heart. This is in dunya, in this life. So what about the next one? It's totally different. It's much even worse than this life. And that's how the scholars understood it. Yes, next. Next question, the uh, rear mic for the brothers. Next question is from the rear of the brothers section. Assalamu alaikum, Chef. I'm Suleiman, I'm a student. And, uh, yeah, before first I ask my question, I would like to request the organizing committee to give us enough time to ask questions. Actually, the time you are giving us is very small, and many people have questions, and uh, we cannot live to uh, Ulma. So I will request first and foremost, you give us time to ask questions. Okay, so thank you for that. And uh, my question is, we the believers, Islam, we have been seen in the West and the rest of the other religion. The way our image has been portrayed is negative. I mean, it is portrayed negatively. And in such cases, it happened that, and even as young as children, the children, even if, if they ask you, who are you, you tell them, I am Suleiman. Maybe for my name, ask my, say my question. You say, I'm saying, oh, you are Muslim. 
the child will get scared. Say, you are Muslim, I don't want to associate with you. And uh, such things uh, may, uh, it has happened to me that and, uh, when I am uh, foreign to this country, I was looking for a house, I asked uh, one of my landlord, then the man, he asked for my name. He said, I'm Suleiman. Actually, I was working with another friend, a Christian, who is, uh, came from my same country. He said, you are Suleiman, you are Muslim. Actually, the man gets scared. So he asked the other Kenya Christian man, do you know him really? He said, no, this man uh, is my countryman, has no problem. No, he said, no, 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 we don't uh, trust the uh, Muslims. And in the same thing, it, I was asked by a Muslim, in the same place, I was asked, uh, I was looking for a house. It was a Muslim, actually, I asked, I asked for a house. Brother, could you please state the question and be yeah. brief? Yeah, the same question. That he told me we cannot uh, it, we cannot trust the Muslim uh, foreigners. Actually, how can we how can we put with the Muslim community to make that we Muslims are not people of uh, violence? Our Islam, as the name Islam suggests, we are peace people. Good. And how can we tell them? That's what I want to ask. Thank, Thank you, you for that me. question. It's a good question. But it's a question that's not on the topic, inshallah. And I've asked that in the beginning that you be brief and that you keep it to the topic. We'll now take a question from the sister section, inshallah. That question is very good. Come up to the stage, inshallah, and after we finish, ask it again, inshallah. If I might say, tomorrow, tomorrow night, I have a lecture. It's called Violence in the Name of God. And I will talk about this in, in details, inshallah. Good, good point. Very good point. Very good point. I agree. Uh, do we have a question on the sister section pertaining to journey of the believers? Okay, we're back to the front mic brother section. Front mic brother section. Could you please state your name and your occupation and briefly state your question? Assalamu the alaikum. time for prayer is drawing close. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Firoz. Uh, while you are giving the lecture about, uh, I mean, uh, what are the benefits of paradise? This question just strike to my mind. Uh, like my question is like when you pray and when you iman gets stronger and stronger i mean after some time you feel like this all material thing doesn't matter to you so when you describe the paradise in a material sense does it i mean will it going to uh, i mean matter to a person who is very high in his iman i mean for for him the ma material the thing like gold silver doesn't make any sense he must be looking for something else rather than looking for i mean wealth and gold and silver in paradise so I mean, when the paradise is described, why it is described in terms of materialistic things? I mean, my question is something like this. I'm not able to put it properly. Okay. And uh, I have one more question. Uh, it's just out of curiosity. One at a time, please. One at a time, please. Fine. Okay. First question first. Okay. Right. Uh, as you heard, uh, the best rewards in Jannah is not the houses, is not the hural e, is not the gold. Uh, places, the best reward in paradise is seeing Allah, that Allah will be pleased with you, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be close to you, that you will be with the prophets and the messengers and the good believers, that you live a life where is nobody gets sick, nobody gets tired, nobody gets sad, nobody gets worried. This is the, 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 the joy of it. Plus, plus, the materialistic things, which is the marriage, the food, the rest, the thing that you wish to have, like houses and things like that, that's beside that, so it's both way. It's really make you happy spiritually and physically, so it's both sides. Thank you. Thank you for the question, brother. Wait me into the line, inshallah, we might be able to get back to you. Brother, your question, inshallah. Asalaamu As Alaikum. This is Salahuddin Ayubi and I'm a software engineer. This is a question pertaining to those who will be put into hellfire and then ca cast into paradise. Is it mentioned in the Quran as to what kind of people and for what kind of deeds will you be put through hellfire and then be cast into heaven? And questions relating to this itself, in a sense, it's a follow-up. What if suppose a Muslim who has sinned in his life but then has realized his sins and, and has accepted his mistakes and has repented from the bottom of his heart, 
Will he still be put through hellfire for the sins that he committed and then cast into heaven? Thanks. Good. Jazakallah, good question. As for those who will go, uh, the believers, that they will be punished for their bad deeds, yes, every verse in the Quran, on any hadith in the Prophet ﷺ Sunnah, mentioning that if a person commits such sin, or in a sin such and such, he will be punished in hellfire. That means that person can be among the people who enter the hellfire and he will be punished for it and he will leave. Like somebody steals, somebody kill, somebody lies, somebody backbites, somebody does this or that. This all will lead to the hellfire. It leads that the person will be punished for that. Does every, it doesn't, does not mean that if you commit sin, you must be punished. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us, tell us you will be punished. But He can break that promise, which is the promise of punishment. Because when you promise somebody to punish, then you don't fulfill that promise. It could be out of your mercy. It could be out of your generosity. That's not, it's not a negative thing. But if you promise somebody a reward and you break the promise, that's a negative thing. That's why whenever a person promised paradise, for a good deed, he will never be, this promise will never be broken. It's like one of your children commit something, did something wrong, he said, I'm going to punish you for that. Then he started behaving good. He said, okay, I've let you go. That's good father. But if your kids change and start behaving right and you still punish him, that's, a, that's not a good father. That's right. But if your kids did something good, he said, I'm going to give you, uh, for example, a hundred rupees. And he did the good thing and he said, I'm not going to give it to you. You're not a good father because the promise of reward must fulfill. The same exactly with the punishment in the whole fire for your sin. It might be punished for it. It might be forgiven. And there are several ways for the sin to be forgiven before reaching the day of judgment. One of it, what you said in the second question, repentance from the bottom of your heart. This is will erase your sin. You will come free from this sin. And the condition for this repentance, as you heard earlier, two days, I think, with Sheikh Yasser Qadi, he gave a lecture here, it's called The Power of Repentance. I highly recommend, if you didn't attend this lecture, to go and purchase it from the brothers who get selling, I believe, in the conference, all the lectures that had been given. Zakallah khair. Zakallah khair, inshallah. Brother in the front, inshallah, your name and occupation. My name is Abbas Abdurisak, and I'm a student here. My question will be outside of your topic. Could we hold that for afterwards then? Could my, we my please question, hold, it, hold it? If it's off the topic, you can ask him as soon yeah, as he it comes will off be the stage. Topic, I think. If it's it on the topic, okay. Fadila to Shaykh, I am an international student here, and I heard from Shaykh Salman al Auda, Salman bin Fahd al Auda. I think you know that he said the student who is studying outside of his country can be deemed as a traveler. Musafir, and can make his prayers short. In the Arabic language, a talib al mubta'at al kharij al ta'alim, yastadi an yukassir al salah, wa lahu ahkam al musafir. La halaka an tishrah lana siyat al shaykh. On to the next mic in the back, inshallah. Is there a question from the back? Is this young man, please state your name and your occupation. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Yusuf. I do homeschooling. My question is, can a person be promoted to a higher place in Jannah by doing the deeds of getting sawab e jariya? Jazakallah. Yes. A uh, good question, Yusuf. Aslahakallah. Um, Yes, a person can be given, he, he did a good deed in this life, which is take them to a certain level. But after his death, maybe he left the sadaqa jariya, which is a good deed, will continue benefiting others, and he will get the reward of it, so his level will be raised. Or his parents, or the children, or the husband, or the wife, or a friend, all of those people can intercede before Allah, to raise your level in paradise to go to a higher level. So for example, if your wife is better than you, and she's in a higher level, you're not going to be separated, and she will not be downgraded. 
you will be upgraded to be with her. If you are married to a righteous man, a righteous man, and your good deeds is not that much, you will be taken to his level. That's why the Prophet ﷺ in the top, but with him all his wives, and they are not in their deeds similar to the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, but they will join them. And the same thing with all his companions like Abu Bakr and Umar and so forth. That's one. Two, also that your parents, if your parents in one level, they will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said in the Quran, Alhaqna bihim durriyati wa ma alatnahum min amalihim min shay. We let their children or their family join them and we did not take anything from their good deeds. So you will be raised, your level will be raised in paradise by intercession, which is, can be done by your family members or by, or by uh, a friend. Yes. Okay, inshallah. If there's a question from the sister side, we'll take that. Anyone who doesn't have wudu should go and begin making their wudu now for the salat. Sister, could you please state your name and occupation? Uh, I'm Dina. I'm, uh, I'm doing medicine now. Uh, you told me that uh, after death, the soul is taken away by the angels and comes back uh, during burial. Uh, my doubt is, what happens to the soul in the intermediate time? Does it meet with Allah or what happens... Uh, uh, after death and uh, before burial in that time? Right. Uh, the soul of the believers after death, after it will be taken by the angels, the angels as came in the several narrations from the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that it will be taken to the heavens, all the way up to the heavens, and represented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah will say, I'm pleased with this soul, and return the soul to the body. So the soul will come back to the body of the person when he or she in their grave, and they will ask the questions by the angels, who's your Lord, who's your religion, what is your religion, and who's your prophet? And after that, after that, the soul of the believers, the soul of the believers will be different. Because not all the believers in one level. So for example, the prophets and the messengers and the best of humanities, like the truthful ones, the Siddiqeen, the murders, and etc. These souls will be basically taken way up to the, the prophets and the messengers will be in the presence of Allah. The souls will be taken and it will be in a place which is in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the proof for that, the Prophet ﷺ said upon his death, بَلْ إِلَى الرَّفِيقِ الْأَعْلَى No, I will choose to be in the company of the Most High. That's the soul of the prophets and the messengers. As for the shaheeds, the one who died as a shaheed, their souls as came in the hadith the Prophet ﷺ will be casted in a green bird, and these green birds will have nests in the, a golden nest in the shadow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne, and it will room freely in paradise, freely in the paradise, eating from the fruits of the paradise. As for the soul of the believers, the good doers, the believers who deserve paradise, their soul will be taking the shape. It will not be cast into, no, it will be giving the shape of a bird. And these birds will be settled in one place in paradise, all of them to gather together until the day of judgment come, then it will send back again to the soul. That's the most correct opinion, which is chosen by Imam al-Qayyim rahimahullah. But in the same time, there is other souls, which is committed certain sins, these souls will be treated different, differently. For example, some souls of the believers will be locked in the grave. It will not be going and cast, taking the shape of the birds. No, it will be in the grave punished for certain sins. And the proof for that, what the Prophet ﷺ said, that a person walking in arrogance, and after his death, Allah let his soul on earth punished until the day of judgment. And another person, the person who died while he or she has death, has death. The Prophet ﷺ said that their soul kept at the gate of paradise, and when their debt will be paid, they will be taken to paradise. Otherwise, the soul will be brought back to earth to be punished in the grave. So that shows you also that certain people will be punished for their deeds, for certain deeds that they committed while 
they are in this period, which is could considered the barzakh or the time of death. Yes. Jazakallah khair for an excellent question system. Brother in the front, inshallah. Thank you for your patience. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I have one more question actually. Uh, it's just out of curiosity. Like, uh, actually, I don't know the uh, Arabic language as I couldn't understand this language. So, I try to understand through the translation, English translation. So, the question is like when I read the, the description of paradise, I feel like it is from the, you know, from the point of view of male believer. So, is it like that the whole description that is given in the Quran Sharif is from the point of view of male believer only and not any, I mean, description from a female believer? I understand that. What he's asking is, what, he doesn't understand Arabic. He's reading a translation of the Quran and he's getting the description of paradise. And everything sounds worldly for like for a living person. There's nothing that sounds supernatural or no, spiritual. No, no, excuse me. Uh, it is from the male believer point of view. Yeah. It's from a male believer point of view. Understood not that. Any, any, uh, not any verse from the female believer point of view. Just want to know this thing. Okay. Uh, he's saying that everything in paradise looks to be good for males and made only for males and always use that as it's for male, for male, for male. No. Anything for male, apply for female as well. Anything for male, apply to female. In Arabic language, we say, maybe we use the verb or the way the talking, it's referred to a male, but in reality, it referred to both. And instead of you saying every time, he or she, you might see he and you meant both. You might say she and it applied to both. So that's the way in the Quran. So anything you hear about paradise, it applied to both. That's why if a woman, for example, enter paradise, she will be provide a husband if she doesn't have a husband or her husband didn't make it <laughs> to paradise she will be given a husband uh, she, she anything the per, anything applied to men will apply to woman as well in paradise thank you i think we have time for one more question inshallah we'll go to the back mic brother section inshallah last question of the evening Assalamu alaikum alaykum. My name is Rajin Munir. I am a college student. <coughs> there I have a doubt. Uh, after that, is it possible for the soul of the person to come back to this world and roam around? And some people some say that uh, they have the soul of others and uh, who are dead. And they behave the same as the person who is dead. Is it possible for them? Uh, even though this is also off topic, but it's uh, up to you. That's on topic to me. It deals with the soul of uh, some people, even okay. believers, they say they have believer souls in them or pro uh, the, prophets. The soul of the believers will not be roaming around, neither the soul of the disbelievers. It will not be roaming around the earth. That's not a, a very correct opinion, even though it's been said by some scholars uh, that the soul of the believer will be roaming around. Um, those who claim that they see the soul of the dead one or the soul of the dead one came in the shape of the dead one and he see it, most likely they did not see the soul. They have seen the Qareem, the jinn who always in the company of the human. And that jinn came in the shape of that person and sometimes he, that jinn tried to deceive the person. And sometimes come to you before death and tell you, I'm your father, and you see really the picture of your father or mother, and will tell you, don't die as a Muslim. I die before you, and that's not true. And this will be the jinn, the qareen of your father, taking the shape of your father, the shape of your mother, and come and tell you that. That's why we did not, we did not come to the conclusion that Islam is the true religion by anything but the correct methods, by examining the evidence, examining the evidence and the proof that Muhammad was a messenger of Allah, that the Quran cannot be other than a book and a word of Allah. So you don't need a dream, you don't need somebody to come or a jinn or a soul to come to tell me the truth. That's why this is, can be a deceiving, but if you're a true believer, this is, will not trick you, it will not deceive you, because you know that this is not right, even if this is a come in the shape of your parents or something like that. So those people use the jinn, it's not the soul, it's not the soul of the person. Uh, the only thing, it's, it may be related, uh, it's mentioned by the scholars, in dreams, in dreams, and to, you know, when the person dies, his soul leaves the body. Some scholars said maybe the soul of that person 
will meet the soul of a, another person dead in paradise or something like that. And that's why when you wake up, you, you see like as if you see your parents, you see somebody die reality and you talk to him. But Allah knows best. No. Jazakallah khair inshallah. Sheikh, is there any special way you'd like to end this evening's session? Uh, any what? Special dua or anything? No, I just want to say to the brothers who ask questions uh, off topics, I will be inshallah standing here to take all your questions. Um, and the sisters as well, if there is anyone has a question, I'll be more than happy to do that. Wa jazakumullahu khairan. And I'll see you inshallah tomorrow. Continue with the program. Encourage your friends, your family to come and to attend. And don't miss Salat al Isha. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad subhanaka Allah muhammadik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah wa With that, brothers and sisters, we end this session, inshallah, of the fourth day of the 2008 Peace Vision of Islam Conference. Tomorrow, inshallah, we welcome you at 11 a.m. for a speech by Sheikh Hussein Yi on Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mercy to mankind, followed by Sheikh Yusuf Estes at 4.15 p.m. speaking on worship the creator, not the creation. Those will both be in hall number 17, which is located behind the expo. Here at the open air ground, we'll have two lectures in the evening tomorrow, starting at 6.30. Brother Mutahir Abdullah Sabri, the birth of Jesus was a miracle. Followed by at 8.15, Sheikh Walid Basiuni again speaking on violence in the name of God. Violence in the name of God. And I believe there was one question off topic, inshallah, and that's an excellent uh, forum, inshallah, for that question.